Well, hello. Oh. Well, hello. Oh. <laughs> well, hello. And welcome back to Conscious Consumerism, where we're thinking about our stuff, as she likes to say. <laughs> Um, it's no surprise if you've been with us since the beginning of the year that we did a 30-day declutter game, minimalism 30-day declutter game in January. And uh, while we did put out a video every day and declutter 465 items in total, uh, we thought that we would go ahead and add an additional episode, so to speak, uh, but we're calling it a wrap up because we want you to know what we actually think about what we did over those 30 days. Um, in those videos, it was pretty matter of fact. Here's what we got rid of and see you tomorrow. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. So here are our thoughts on what the 30 day minimalism game, declutter game is all about. This video is probably gonna be long cause you're in it. <laughs> so we had five main takeaways from our 30 day challenge or game. And the first one of those was that decluttering brings to light a lot of mistakes that have been made in the past. So the items that you realize you shouldn't have bought or don't need or are now decluttering can represent money that you spent and feel like you wasted, time that you spent researching before you bought or maybe not researching before you bought and buying mistakes. Uh, baggage that you might have carried from house to house, you know, literal baggage. Um, you know, just hanging on to identities you don't align with, stuff you don't actually need. Maybe the reasons you bought those things come back to light when you stumble over these items that you don't need anymore, and maybe you bought those not for the right reasons. And that's... Sentimental plastic. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> hey! <laughs> But I mean, you know, that can bring up feelings of guilt if you feel, you know, regretful that you spent the money, used the resources uh, that were necessary to produce that item, and then it feels like you really have to waste it now in decluttering because we did try to rehome most of the items, everything we could, either by, you know, reselling them to ensure that somebody who wanted them got them, or, um, you know, finding friends who could use them, or recycling where we can, you know, donating hopefully to somewhere that could get, you know, another another home, another use. But some of the items we did just have to throw away because they were not rehomeable and that didn't feel great either. So it would have been better just not buy those items in the first place and be more conscious about bringing those into our home. And that's what we are gonna try to do going forward so that we can avoid those mistakes and avoid that subsequent guilt. So yeah, that's that's the first main thing that we learned. So the second thing we noticed in retrospect as we were going through the items that we were decluttering is that a lot of what we had were things that were probably never intended or we never should have brought home anyway. Um, I think one of our big uh, examples would be, uh, what is it, Taco Bell hot sauce packets, you know? When you ask for hot sauce at Taco Bell, they usually just give you a handful. And what we found is that we end up having a drawer full of hot sauce packets. I mean, why? We don't need that. So we've gotten in the habit of refusing those things. And, um, you know, even uh, what is it, uh, IKEA instructions, you know, uh, I think the minimalists say, you know, the best place for your junk is to leave it at the store or refuse or reevaluate uh, re whether or not you need something within the first 30 seconds of it being in your home. And after we've used the IKEA instruction manual, it's probably time to just go ahead and recycle it because I think in one case, we've had an instruction manual for like three or four years. Well, we decluttered some of them in the 30 days. <laughs> yeah, we, well, that, that's, yeah, I mean, we <laughs> decluttered it eventually, but I mean, we hung on to it for so long and it, it, it never really should have lasted that long. So really, really think about the things you, you bring home, whether you're buying it or whether someone's offering it to you for free. I mean, sure, it may be a free hot sauce packet, or even a gift. Or a gift, yeah. White, white elephant, right? Yeah, you can tell people. Or secret Santa. Yeah, you'd rather not have gifts yeah. or you want consumables yeah. instead of I mean, stuff. yeah, consumables are great because once you eat them, 
or drink them or whatever, they're gone. Yeah, some you know? people call those disappearing gifts. Yeah, yeah. It's so like so, bath products and food and stuff. That yeah. It doesn't stick around. Yeah, if you can gently opt out of that, then I think that's better, or at least direct the gift into that consumable realm. The last thing you want is someone's throwaway, like, you know, purple vase that, or something that you, you're <laughs> that never you gonna use. To yeah, and then you, now you have to declutter it or bless someone else later on next Christmas with it or something like that. So the third big lesson that we've learned after the 30 day minimalism game is that there are a lot of things that we don't need. And in fact, most things that you think you need are actually wants. So this slowly came to light with every new decluttering pass that we were doing. I mean, to go back into the challenge, the first few days were pretty easy, right? So it was pretty easy yeah, to come up with. Yeah, one and two items, yeah. Yeah, one, two, three, you know, even up to, you know, seven and eight. We, you, because you kind of declutter things, you know, you go through the bathroom and you might have 20 items and then, you know, that takes a few days. It gets harder as you go on and you have to go back to the same areas and reevaluate. oh, you know, can I let go of any more stuff here even though I've already been through here and taken the obvious out? And in that reevaluation process, you do see a lot of things that you thought you needed or thought you couldn't declutter that are actually just there because you're used to them being there and not evaluating them. So one of our examples was some towels that we just had hanging over the laundry, the washing machine dryer, and we never used those, but they were just there. And when you see that, you think, okay, or when we looked at them, we thought we might use those. Those are useful items, but do we actually ever use them? No. Do I know what's in my nightstand drawer without looking at it? No. So that probably means I don't need the items that are in there. Um, yeah, a lot of the things that you think you need are not needs. And all of advertising is designed to make you believe otherwise. So also be careful, you know, this is an expansion on our third lesson, be careful of what you consume and be aware of the influence that you might be, you might be under. And if you think you need something that is stuff based, you might be searching for something else. So we are actually, uh, you could call us artists as well. Um, Steven actually is the one who edits our videos and has that creative outlet in photography and videography, but we're actually both musicians and we kind of live in that realm as well. And where I'm going with this is that sometimes the feelings or experiences that lead you to think you need a consumer product are actually fulfilled by artistic experiences or art or, you know, just pursuing things of that nature. Experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be artistic experiences, but I do believe that's why artistic experiences are created in the first place. So this could probably be a whole topic <laughs> of another video, but the yeah. bottom line here is that most needs are probably wants. And if you think you need something, maybe you're looking for something else. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. And that brings us into point four, where, you know, once you start decluttering things and you narrow, narrow what you have, whether it's a want or a need, down to a few items, those items all of a sudden become more valuable because they're not mixed in with a bunch of other junk. Uh, they are, for one, you've uh, uh, evaluated whether or not you truly want or need this thing, and it's it's position in the middle of the nightstand drawer is now like uh, intentional and it's it could be surrounded by complete open space and you you could focus on that and I you know I, we've talked about this and I thought about our travel to the Louvre in Paris and you know there are just galleries and galleries of fine art but the very most important pieces the Mona Lisa the uh, Venus de Milo they they're not uh they're not accompanied by anything you know they are on their own wall and i think that's that's what makes that piece of art so special is like it's just it's taken out of all of the surrounding noise so that you can focus on it and it's like a pl place of honor yeah yeah and i think that's that's kind of what what happens with your stuff is that you know that's you get a, your own home too yeah 
Yeah, I mean, just think about art on the wall. I mean, it, even in your own home, if you have one nice uh, piece of art in your living room, when a guest comes over, they're going to know that that piece of art is, is special to you. If it's cluttered with tons of pictures around it, they would never even, maybe even never notice a, notice that that piece. Yeah, I mean, so, not to knock the gallery wall aesthetic, yeah, no. but yeah. you know, it is something to think about, quality over quantity, yeah. intentionality over just consumer for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 The fifth point now is one that kind of connects to bigger questions about stuff in general and the ethicalities of consumerism. So the fifth thing that we were learning about and considering while doing this challenge and experiencing all the waste that it generates and all the things that we realized we didn't need in the first place um, is just, is stuff even ethical? Which, okay, that's a very vague question, but we do know and increasing information is coming to light that it takes advantage, many industries take advantage of people of resources, of you know, policies that are just not not things that we want to support. And so in examining all of our stuff more closely, we're opening our eyes to that side of the world as well. And this is, you know, again, where our conscious consumerism ideals come in, where we're trying to be more conscious about every aspect of what we bring into our home and making use of what we have rather than possibly buying something that somebody was not paid a fair wage to make, um, you know, used resources that are damaging to the environment and the planet and perhaps shortening the lifespan of the earth. The small things that we do day to day do have an impact on these practices and that's the reality. And so that's one of the other issues that it brought to light for us was just what goes into the stuff that we brought into our house and how we can be more conscious about minimizing the negative things in the world that happened as a result. But that's, that is one of the things we learned is that there's more to stuff than just the surface level of the stuff itself. So the bottom line is that less, having less is actually a way to feel like you have more in a lot of ways. So, you know, from our last point, more accountability for the rest of the world, knowing that you're not putting other people through negative situations just to serve your own wants so you have more positivity that way but even in the practical senses of having more time because you have less inventory to manage in your home that's something another uh, youtube minimalist the minimal mom says a lot it's just less inventory to manage um, less wasted money and time so in that way you have more money because you didn't buy things you don't need you have more time because you didn't spend it looking at things that you might buy or acquire. So we realized that none of this is new information. It's all out there. Uh, minimalism channels have been putting it out for a long time now. But um, we thought our perspective of being at the beginning of this process would be interesting for those that are contemplating it. And um, I think we have a unique perspective because we had a lot of, we still have a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're you in know. that phase. We're in it. and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're at the very beginning. We've done one 30-day declutter game, you know, and uh, I can't say that we are minimalist by any means, but I think the bug is kind of kind of bitten us, and um, yeah, it's just a it's freeing, you know. It's freeing, but we still have a long way to go. So we welcome any comments, any questions, you know, if you want to ask us anything about how we're doing and you identify with where we're at, feel free to stick around. We'd love to have you here if you want to subscribe. Um, for that one person who was disliking our 30-day videos, tell us why. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to do better. Yeah. You know, if, if there's a way that we could improve our content and, you know, please you, let us know. This feedback is valuable. Um, you know, if you just don't like this content, then maybe click another video. Well, I don't care. You <laughs> dislike every video I put out there. It's not like they okay, get a well, lot of views anyway. You know, so. but it's, hey. <laughs> well, you know, we're doing this for us. It's it's our accountability. It's, you know. I know, but, you know. Yeah. If you have a reason that you dislike it, let us know and we'll fix it. Yeah. Maybe. Or, Try to, or we'll unless tell we you, disagree with you. Yeah, we'll tell you that we don't like it. <laughs> and <laughs> Anyway. 
Okay, let's wrap it there. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Like and subscribe. And uh, like she said, comment. Let us know how we can improve. Let us know what you might be interested in learning from us. And I think we'd be happy to, uh, to, to answer any questions you have. We are trying to be open books and not really hold anything back uh, through this process. So anyway, I guess we will see you later.